Hi, welcome to the Felix Ajay channel where we talk about family, business and lifestyle. If you've not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. Just hit the subscribe button and then we can, you can always share my story going on and on every single day. Make sure you subscribe, it's free. It's not even a big deal, just subscribe. I've said it plenty of times so that you can do it. Now, yeah, do it now. Subscribe, click here, here, subscribe. All right, whatever. <laughs> Let's go straight into the topic of today and the story, story time, story time. All I do. Today we're going to talk about how I became a father at 32. In the middle of COVID, I, I'm actually going to enjoy talking about this because I've always wanted to just explain and share this experience of becoming a father in the middle of COVID. I'm sure a lot of people got these kind of blessings in the middle of it and so grateful to God for you to have this opportunity to actually be a father. It's a big deal. Going forward in my channel, you would, you would, you would hear my journey. I would share everything that I've kind of been through being a father and being a parent in these kind of times. But today, we're talking about how it happened. So from the very beginning, there was man and there was woman. And there was a co-joining. What's that? What's that? <laughs> there was something that happened and then it was just great. And then before we knew it, there was a point in the hoven. And then we're expecting a princess. And it was just, it was beautiful. Uh, it was beautiful to know that I was going to expect, I was going to get a baby girl. I've always wanted to get a baby girl. I've always wanted a baby girl first. I like, it's been the main thing. I'm like, baby girl first. I love baby boy, but you know what? Baby girl first. And so it was beautiful to know that, that I was going to get a baby girl. And then, uh, fast forward to uh, 2020, uh, myself and my wife decided we we're going to have a baby in London, in the United Kingdom. And so in about February, she migrated, she shipped herself over to the UK um, to get ready to have a baby. Uh, EDD, first of all, let's, let, let's not talk about EDD because EDDs are the most on real things ever. Some people have very accurate EDDs. I think they should just call their own DD, due date, the end. But like the rest of us that have EDDs, our DDs are not even accurate. Um, our DD was meant to be April, April 5th to 7th. It was just dancing all around. But eventually, um, she came way earlier. And that's what this story is about. So, um, earlier in March, I already bought my ticket because definitely I had to travel um, sometime at the end of March. I bought my ticket for the end of March 31st and um, my, the aim was that I was going to surprise my wife and everybody and I'll have like a couple of days to be there before um, our baby comes. Then the week before I had to travel, like the week um, before the 1st of April, the week before the 31st, I, I don't know why, I just I started having this funny feeling that I had to travel on time. Obviously, I think it was all coupled with the fact that um, COVID was already becoming a big thing. Um, countries and cities were already um, declaring lockdowns. I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba. We already had a lockdown by that time. London, we, who was like the first set of people to have lockdowns, they already had this very strict lockdown. So I, I think I was just thinking about how will it be, what will happen. I had to go on time, I had to get there in good time and things like that. So I, I, I started brooding and everything. Just to even cap it up and even make it worse, the airline called on like the Wednesday and said that my ticket was cancelled, that I either had to travel like right immediately or I would have to wait for like a couple more days after. So I just, that day and then I just decided, you know what, I'm going to travel that Friday. And obviously I didn't tell my wife nothing in my mind. I'm like, ah, ah, even better way to even do the surprise because I already had the ticket. So I sent it to her. She already saw the date so that ah, everything was good, playing along. So, but we had a lot of things to do also. I had, we were moving houses. And so I had to like make sure everything was done between Wednesday and Friday morning. Big shout out to all my friends that rallied around to make sure that, that happened. That's another thing. However, Friday morning came and then I, I was going to my cousin's house who was going to take me to the airport. And I called my wife and I'm like, ah, I'm going to the warehouse right now. And it's going to be a very long day. Now maybe try not to call me because if you call me, I'll probably not be available. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, she was chopping my zobo now, chopping everything well. As far, good liar. So, I got, when I got to my cousin's house, my cousin was right in front of me. I'm like, ah, you know what, babe? I'll call you later. I'm in front of my boss now. That we're going into the warehouse. It's going to be a long day. She's like, ah, okay, okay, take care. I said, yes, take care. You too, self, take care. We are going to take care. So, we went to the airport. And, uh, and 
basically we got to the airport and there was this big issue about traveling obviously because of the lockdown there was no set rules of who can travel what like when you can travel and things like that so everyone i think everyone was just guessing really at the airport so everyone was just checking they were googling it like there was literally no rule so everyone was googling oh can this country allow this country in it was just weird they eventually allowed me to go through because i was just thinking hey you people should not piss me off this baby we're talking about here so i left um i went to toronto i got to toronto for my first um, um layover and my wife called. First of all, me, I was already thinking, this guy should not call me in the airport. Dun, dun, your flight coming. I don't that thing used to give you away. You cannot even do surprise in the airport. Because those guys are no and there's no way you can hide. You can't say you want to go to the toilet to now. Nah, even in the middle of the toilet, you will hear thing thing. So I was already praying, please don't call me. But I think it was one like because of COVID, there were not a lot of flights, so there were not there was not a lot of announcements, I'm guessing. And then she called and I think she was already getting worried. She was only getting cramps and feeling funny, and then she was. She said she couldn't feel the baby move. I said, "Please, in the name of Jesus, baby's gone move." What are we talking about here? And she's like, ah, she was just really panicking. But obviously, because I was in there, I didn't know what to say, and I didn't want to go and drop that I was on my way. So I just said, "You know what? We'll go to the hospital." She wanted to go, so I said, "Go." I didn't say you need to go, but thank God she went. And then obviously, I think they told her everything was fine, blah blah blah. She went back home. So when she got back home, I was waiting for my connecting flight, and then. She called, hey, in my mind, I said, please, don't be calling when they are doing ton ton. I think there was only one time I didn't pick up the phone because they were doing plenty of ton tons. I was waiting for them to finish. And so when she, when she eventually, when I got through with her, I'm like, you know what, babe, go to bed. Go and sleep. Don't, don't, don't pick your phone. Even if I call you, don't pick up your phone. You need to rest. We're talking about our baby here. Our baby did not move. Move did not look fun. I shall did everything. I shall say, she, she shall say, yes, I will go and sleep. She shall went to go and sleep. As a good wife, she used to listen to somebody. But sometimes coconut head used to enter. But that's another thing. <laughs> so we eventually, um, I eventually boarded my flight and got to the UK. I would already called her mom and said that I was on my way. I was coming. She was the only one that knew I was coming in. Um, I got to the UK. I got to London about six thirty Saturday morning. That's March twenty eighth. And I, I think I got in at six thirty. And her mom called me like literally immediately. It's like she was. She knew I was coming. She knew my flight. And then she she was just waiting to call me. And I'm like, ah, what's going on? What's wrong? And she's like, ah, so today, like, have I arrived? I'm like, oh, yes, I just got to the airport. And then she's like, ah, please, so try and be coming on time. Ah, she's already feeling funny. At about 4 a.m., she started to have contractions and stuff. I'm like, ah, the due date is still one week. There's still a whole, a whole one week in the middle of it. Like, what's the... But I'm like, you know, don't worry. I'm already here. Um, I'll be here very soon. If you know Heathrow Airport very well, like, the terminals are just far apart. It's annoying. So I had to walk almost 15 minutes to get to immigration. Got there and everything was fine. I remember the guy at the desk was asking, what are you doing in the UK? And then I said, oh, that I, like my wife was having a baby. And then he said, oh, when? I said, now. It's like, right now. I said, yes. He's like, go, go, go. Like, he was really like, oh, yeah, go. I'm like, thank you. And we had, like, obviously had a few things to do with the airport, tried to clear a few things and just to get everything done. If this was like around... This took about 30, 45 minutes-ish. And about 7.15 in the morning, I was, I was trying to get into the taxi to go. Um, and my mother-in-law called me and she's like, oh, that we're already on our way to the hospital. And I'm thinking, to the hospital, like, did she just say she was contracted? Like, she just started, this is the thing, before all this time, I, I kind of had this premonition, or I don't know, maybe I had this false idea in my head that, oh, you know the stories we hear and the videos we watch about how contractions take long and how you'll be holding hand and how they'll be screaming and how you walk up the stairs and down the stairs for the baby to like all these things didn't happen i kid you not like nothing happened she literally went in to have a shower and a hot shower apparently you don't have hot showers when you're close to your due date she went to have a hot shower and i think that one just cascaded the catalyst or the reaction and that's how my own girl is like i'm coming out right now <laughs> and then and then like it just fast forwarded everything she got very dilated quickly and they had to rush to the hospital and I'm like okay the journey was about 45 minutes from the airport to the house and to the hospital it was really close to the house so I go into the taxi I was about to go she said oh we're going to the hospital I'm like okay I'll meet you at the hospital see you there talk to you later I've not done five minutes in the taxi I was still even trying to gather myself and figure out what was going on next thing my dad called and my dad's like ah have you arrived I'm like yeah I'm in the taxi I'm going already and he's like, oh, well, all right, no problem. I'll talk to you later. 
And I'm thinking, what's it like? Okay. And the next thing, my mother-in-law called, and she's like, ah, oh, congratulations. See, first of all, I'm like, don't congratulate me. I know I, I I was on hearing, I was on hearing it because no, nobody's going to congratulate me inside taxi. So I said, what I congratulate like that I arrived safely or what? Ah, what's it be more like? She's giving birth. I'm like, like I, I I just I don't want to hear. Like talk to you guys later. See you guys very soon. Do this. Like I I don't know. I had a mixed feeling of upset, excited, unsure. It was just it was just a weird mixed feeling. And then I think okay, she called, she dropped the phone. My sister called and I said, ah, congratulations, blah blah blah. And then she's like, oh, they sent us a picture. Do you want to see the picture? I said, see, eh? if anybody sends the picture to my phone, that person is deleted for life. I'm going to use my two eyes to look at my daughter for the first time, not through the picture. Like, I was just upset. I think, obviously, it was just coming from the fact that I really, really was looking forward to being there. And, obviously, like, doing the whole tradition of carrying baby and holding hands and screaming and screaming at each other and, obviously, pushing and things like that. But it was just a fantastic thing. Like, baby was out in, like, 12 to 13 minutes of just being in labor. Like, I don't, I don't even call it labor. There was no labor. There was just a coming out. Like, it was just the easiest thing. I got to the, I got to the hospital eventually. And because of COVID, obviously, I me, mean, I was rushing in. I had sanitizer, mask. I had, like, three different kinds of masks. Sanitizer. I even had one disinfecting product like that that I bought from Canada where I work. Basically, I was prepared for COVID. I got there, the midwife is like, no, you cannot go in. I was screaming. Like, I was literally, imagine being behind the door where your wife was with your baby. Like, I was screaming. I wanted to go. And she's like, sorry, sir, we cannot let you. It's COVID, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, oh, that when, she, when we're moving her to the ward to rest, you would see her on the way. I'm like, I was, like I'm literally going to stand and she'll be passing. I'll see her. I'm like, no, I was me. I was just screaming. So I got out. I was trying to call everybody I knew. I see if no, I can call the queen. To help me out. But I was I was just calling everybody, calling everybody. And people were calling me and congratulating me, but I was just upset because I'm like, I've not even seen the baby. Guys, stop calling me. And basically the maid, midwife came out and she's like, you know what, we're so sorry, blah blah blah. But the good news is your wife is fine, your baby is fine, that like you can go home and just rest. And they are sleeping right now. When they wake up, we would call you. We're just going to do a couple of tests for the baby, and then you can come pick them up. I'm like, they're gonna go home today. She's like, oh yeah, like everything's fine. Like your wife is fine. Like let, I'm not even gonna go too deep into the wife is fine story because, like, when you hear Hebrew women birth, like it's, it's nothing short of it. Like this is somebody that went in and the midwife is like push. The baby already came out before she even pushed. Like she was wonder asking her uh, like when she like let me know when that should push please let me know. Baby have sleep. They've carried the baby away. She was still. Like she was still feeling like she had like it was so swift and easy like one of the easiest i've seen i'm just super grateful to god for how easy it went even though like that's the reason why they did not allow me to reach there because if they do two hours three hours pushing i would have reached there before but we still thank the lord <laughs> it was just great uh, i came back i think about one o'clock and i picked up the baby and i was just i, I was guiding me with my own chest like everybody Nobody was beside me. Everybody was walking in front. I don't know who, I don't know whether I was conscious or unconscious. Like everybody was in front. I was at the back. Like I'm like, you people should be going. Nobody's carrying this baby. Precious little thing like that. And then we moved out, obviously, of the hospital. Go home. I prepared a bassinet already. I prepared everything. Like I was ready for her. I'm like, I'm your daddy. I am your daddy. Like I was I was so elated because man, it was it was so real to actually see my baby girl. The one I had been waiting for for a long time. Uh, well, long time, nine months, not me. Uh, but it was great. It was really, really good to see. And and I, I just feel grateful. Now she is 10 months-ish. Now, growing extremely fast. I'm like, man, how do you guys grow this fast? And then it's just from one stage to another. I'll be sharing a lot of things about, obviously, fatherhood and parenting and parenting a girl child and obviously being in this husband slash father mode because... Of, I, I know there's too much out there about motherhood and, and, and mothers and the pregnancy journey but there's so, there's so much story still in the pregnancy journey for the husband himself there's so much you need to know, there's so much you need to learn and some of the things actually help uh, some of the things I'll be sharing on this channel but basically that's how I became a father whoa, whoa 
I'm, if, I'm even saying it again and it's just like, ah, okay. But yeah, I love my baby girl so much. Um, she's literally my chest, my whole chest. People that know us, like, they know. She, I spoil her. Like, I know I'm not meant to, but I try not to. Like, I try not to, but I can't. And I, I, I don't know how that. I know a lot of people know how that feels. If you know how that feels, like, if you relate, drop something in the comment. Let's know you relate. Uh, but that's just how I became a father, and that's how my journey has been in fatherhood. This is 2021. I'm looking forward to spending an amazing, amazing time with her as she grows. And I will take you guys along with the journey. This is the Felix Ajayi channel. We talk about family, business, and lifestyle. Again, please, if you've not subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. Share, like, click the like button, watch, share, tell your friends, whatever it is. We're in this together. We're in this together. We're in this. Okay, yeah. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.